this is Stephanie from PrimaryThemePark.com. I know it can be challenging to teach greater than, less than, and equal to in your kindergarten and first grade classrooms. A lot of times those little ones confuse the symbols and might struggle with the concept. Today I'm going to share with you some activities and ideas for making that easier in your classroom. to teach the concept of comparing numbers to our students is by using candy. Take two paper plates and put small candy pieces on each plate. Just make sure that the plate on the left has noticeably more candy than the plate on the right. Then tell your students, hey, I'm going to give you the candy off one of these two plates. Which one do you want and why? And I bet they're going to say they want the candy from the plate on the left, obviously because it has the most candy. What students have done without even realizing it is they've compared these two amounts. So point out to them when we compare two amounts, we're looking to see if one amount is greater than the other one, if that amount is less than the other amount, or if the two amounts are the exact same. Then I like to put these words in between the two plates and talk about the comparison. The amount of candy on the plate on the left is greater than the amount of candy on the plate on the right. Now, let's count to make sure that's true. When we count the candy pieces on the left, we find that there are 20 pieces of candy. And when we count the amount on the right, we see that there are only six pieces of candy on the right. And we do know that the number 20 is greater than the number six. So practice reading that comparison together. 20 is greater than six. Now do some more examples like these. Maybe this time you use a smaller amount on the left. Let's take some of these away. And let's make this side only have five. And we're gonna give some to this side so that it has 10. Again, you can ask the student which plate um, they would want the candy from. They're gonna say probably this time from the right. Why? Because the amount of candy on this plate is less than the amount of candy on the other plate. You can count to find out if you were correct and we see that the amount on the left is five the amount on the right is ten again practice reading that comparison together five is less than ten you can again do an example where the amounts are equal but this just gives students familiarity with the vocabulary and the words behind comparisons before we move into using the abstract symbols now you might be wondering, well, what about my non-readers? I have kids who are not even gonna be able to read this. And that's a really good concern. I would suggest that if you're writing this out on your whiteboard, to write these in the same order every time, maybe always use is greater than, is less than, is equal to. So it's a predictable pattern for the students and it helps them better understand which one to choose. You can help point out phonetically, say, you know, this word starts with L, what sound does L make? And when they say, okay, well, which one starts with that sound? Does greater start with that sound or does less than start with that sound? So you can help them sound it out, or you can just simply read it to them or have a partner read it to them. Um, more importantly than being able to read it on their own, we want them to be able to hear and to understand the language of comparison before we move on to abstract symbols. Now that students are familiar with the vocabulary of comparisons, it's time to introduce them to the symbols. I would do another candy comparison where they're comparing the amounts of candies on two plates, they're counting to find the amount, and then using the words of comparison in between. Then I would say, you know what, if we had to write these words out every time that we compared these numbers, it would take us a really long time. But thankfully, mathematicians have come up with some symbols that we can use as a shortcut for these words when we compare. And then I would introduce to them the greater than, less than, and equal to symbols. Here are two posters I use to teach the greater than, less than symbol to my students. 
For greater than, I tell them that the GR in greater stands for go right. The greater than symbol always goes to the right or points to the right. Go right also is a reminder you can look at your right hand and find the shape made between your index finger and your thumb. That's the greater than symbol. When you're drawing the greater than symbol, you also go right first with your pencil and then go back left to make the shape. The L in less stands for left. The less than symbol always points to the left. Again, you can look at your left hand as a reminder. The index finger and thumb on your left hand make the less than symbol. When you're drawing the less than symbol, you go left first with your pencil and then back to the right to make the shape. Now do some more candy comparisons like we did previously and this time after using the words of comparison change those out for the symbols and practice reading the comparison. 10 is greater than 6. Do several more examples, some with less than and equal to, but each time start with the words first and then change those out for the symbols. After we've introduced the greater than less than symbol to our students, I think it's important to give them practice just reading the inequalities, especially at this age since a lot of times they tend to confuse the symbols. And also this is a great step for students who may struggle with this concept just to practice reading it. You know, what do I say when I come to this symbol? So we practice reading from left to right like a sentence. That's important to point out to your students. 45 is less than 55. And I think it's also important for students to be able to identify which one is the smaller number in the inequality, which one is the larger number in the inequality. So just take some time to practice reading and finding the larger and smaller numbers before you move on to giving them inequalities to do on their own. some fun hands-on ways for your students to practice comparing numbers using the greater than, less than, equal to symbols. This is a letter V I picked up at a craft store for about a dollar and I just painted it purple. But if you turn it to the right, it magically becomes a greater than symbol. And to the left, it's your less than symbol. Now your kids don't ever have to know this was the letter V. You could just tell them, you know, look, I've got some greater than less than symbols for us to use. And then you could put magnets on the back, put it on a magnetic board, and allow students to use it to turn it in between numbers to make inequalities. Uh, you might have them write two numbers and use the symbol in between, or you might give them one number on one side of the inequality and then let them supply another number on the other side to make it true. Another easy way to make a hands-on greater than less than symbol is to take a flexible drinking straw, extend the end and bend it down so that it makes an upside down V, and then cut the long end so that it equals the shorter end and now you have a greater than less than symbol. If you take the straw that you have left over, you can cut it into equal pieces to make an equal sign to use as well. If you have some number cards, um, allow students to turn those over to make numbers. You can easily differentiate this activity by using one, two, or three digit numbers. And once they make numbers, then they can use their hands-on greater than less than symbol in between them to make the inequality true. Have them practice reading it. 74 is greater than 14. Then they can make different numbers. These two numbers are equal. So they can use their equal to symbols in between. And again, practice reading it aloud left to right. 74 is equal to 74. It's just a fun hands-on way to practice using the symbols to make inequalities. You can also use your number cards to create a fun comparison game for your students to play. This makes a really great math center or an activity for your early finishers. You start out by having students draw cards to create numbers. Easily differentiate this activity by having them draw one, two, or three cards to make one, two, or three digit numbers. And then they record the number that they've made. And now they're going to spin a paper clip to see which symbol they land on. Oh, I'm kind of right on the line on that one. Now I landed on the greater than symbol. So that's the symbol I'm going to write. 
And now I need to think of a number that is less than 40 to make my inequality true. And I'm going to write the number 20. Students keep drawing and making numbers, spinning the paper clip to see which symbol they're going to use, and then filling in the inequality to make it true. It's a fun game for students to play, and I find they like drawing the cards to see which numbers they make, but then it gives them an opportunity then to come up with numbers on their own to finish the inequality. A number scavenger hunt is a fun activity to use as a math center or maybe to send home for your students to complete. But students look through magazines or newspapers for numbers. A great place to find them are in the sales ads that come in the newspaper or even in the recycling bin. These numbers right here, I cut off of food boxes in our recycling bin. But then they simply use the numbers that they find on their scavenger hunt to complete the inequalities. Instead of just using boring worksheets, I like to get the students interactive and involved with the content that they're working on. And one easy way to do this is to use a random number generator. This is a number generator app I downloaded for free on my phone. You can even go to the Google search bar and type in random number generator and it will pull up a number generator for you. But I like to use it because then it will give students numbers that they can then practice with. Whether you're working on addition, subtraction, here I'm going to use it to make inequalities but it's just a fun way to generate numbers instead of just going through a boring worksheet. On this app, it lets me choose the numbers from and to. So I chose to do from number 10 to 100, and then it generates numbers for me. So I'm gonna write the number 34, hit the button, let it generate another number for me, 51, and then I'm gonna compare those. 34 is less than 51. Keep going, 70, let it generate another number for you, 23, 70 is greater than 23. I find students like this. It's a great way to incorporate technology. If you have tablets in your classroom, it's an easy way for students to get involved in their learning and to not just do boring drill and skill. If you have a set of alphabet stamps, you can easily use the letter V for a greater than, less than stamp and allow your students to stamp the symbols in their worksheets instead of just writing it in. This could be a fun math center activity. Or if you have alphabet stickers, you probably have a lot of V stickers left over. So you can allow students to use the Vs as greater than, less than symbols to fill in their papers. This might not work for your whole class, but it might be great for a small math group or one or two students you're working with individually. I hope you found these activities and ideas helpful, and these are things that you can use right away in your classroom. If you're interested in the greater than, less than posters I mentioned in the video, you can download them for free by clicking on the link below, and you can find the other worksheets in my TPT store.